Hello everyone! In this video we are going to have a lot of different stories and a lot of different news stories. Keep a critical mind as always. I will always try to put all the evidence and proof out there. If there isn't enough then also you can search for yourself but I will try to keep all those things out there for you guys. And as always keep a critical mind and I hope you enjoy. Niji Sanji just made a huge huge oopsie. What I mean by the huge oopsie? What did they do? They went and copyright struck a channel. A group that had used uh content that they thought was theirs it wasn't it wasn't but they thought it was theirs i hate when companies do this big companies like them tend to do this a lot and i hate that so here's what happened thank you for your continued support Nidhi sanji and Nidhi sanji en we have requested the relevant social media companies to delete posts including the video contents published by claynosaurs inc claiming that the music used in the video content published the claynosaurs inc music here after music one infringes on the copyright of the music mountain whales here and after music two used in self-produced film the demon hungers by one of our livers vox however upon further investigation so they went they went you know trigger happy and they did the copyright stuff before even checking sources and checking to make sure it was right or wrong they didn't even check they just went this this sounds like our stuff that's copyright claim upon further investigation it was found out that both music one and music two utilize the same music available for sale by a third party and therefore our claims of copyright infringement were untrue therefore we have sent re a request uh, to the relevant social media companies uh, to withdraw our claims of copyright infringement the video content published by Clanosaurus Inc is now once again available for viewing on Instagram we deeply apologize to Clanosaurus Inc and those they enjoy their content and they did in Japanese as well of course they shut down comments because you know they were gonna get eaten alive in comments. So she shut down comments. Since they messed up, they don't, they know that people are gonna be crazy on this. They know that people are gonna go wild with this, like I am. And uh, that they are going to be destroyed in the comments. I wonder, he's left it open. Vox is a, is stronger than Niji Sanji. He's actually left it open. I'd also like to extend my sincere apologies. When first watching the ad in question, I immediately and incorrectly assumed that the music they had used was stolen from my film. But in reality, that small part is a sample sold by a third party. It's possible never crossed my mind, and I'm very sorry for jumping to the conclusion that Clanosaurus would intentionally steal music from the film. I'd also like to apologize to the fans of both the film and Clanosaurus, who may have been affected or made the same mistake I did. Overall, I'm very grateful for Clanosaurus' understanding, clear communication, and forgiveness during this process, and I'm happy we're able to put this issue to rest. Clanosaurus is the bigger person here. Clanosaurus Inc., never heard of them, but they are the bigger person here. Why? Because their music was rightfully theirs, and they got hit by Vox Akuma. And in order for you guys to understand who got hit by Vox Akuma and got hit by Nidhi Sanji, this is Clanosaurus. As far as I can tell, this is the correct one. This is what they've been doing with music involved, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to play the music because there's already been copyright crap about it, but um, I'm not going to uh, let anyone copyright claim anything else. And here's Clanosaurus things. You have their uh, actual official channel, Wild Herd Embarking on Epic Adventures. It's Claymation from what it looks like. It might be computer uh, assisted Claymation, but still they have characters here. They have their Instagram, which was hit. I don't have Instagram, so that was hit. Um, but yeah, they have their Instagram that was hit, their TikTok that was hit, and their collectibles that they have here. I'm doing a little bit of a promotion for them because they got hit hard. Physical and digital, fast and secure, uh, first six species, you can have all that kind of stuff here. At the very least, the apology was made. And um, really bad on the part of Nidhi Sanji, to be honest with you. And it says, thanks for the clarification. I'm glad it was resolved amicably in a respectful manner. Of course, you know, people saying, you know, it, no worries, understandable. It's been professionally sorted out and that's what matters. It appears to be a bit of communication, miscommunication as well. Um, wow, well, handle the situation the best way you knew how in the moment and that you can never do what anyone expect from you. So basically, I will give props to Vox Akuma for actually putting out the apology. It's good PR to put out the apology. He actually knows a bit of PR now on putting out apologies. But of course, it should have never happened. Period. Should never happen. Don't it's not good to be trigger happy with copyrights because copyright claims have destroyed my channel. In fact, copyright strikes have pretty much pushed me out of the algorithm. And uh many of my subscribers and followers have told me this that they no longer see my stuff. So copyright strikes can do this to a channel, even if they're removed later, because YouTube immediately puts you on a list of risky creators. 
I am now on that list of risky creators and that my stuff does not get pushed out because they're going to assume that I'm going to get copyright claimed again. And that sucks for me. That sucks for anybody like Clannosaurus who wants to uh, do much better and actually have more content put out. It is bad because thanks to that, like I said, I don't get anywhere near the impressions that I had before and I don't get pushed out as much to people who subscribe to me and follow me. So it's dangerous to see this. And this is why I'm so aggressively against this as a side note. I don't want to be this seen as a person who only does negative things. Of course, Nidhi Sanji as a organization is negative and there's no positive out there other than the fact that they employ people and they actually give money to people because they have to. They can't be making slaves, of course. But uh, the AP actual people under it, like Tusi Manazako is kind of a chaos gremlin. Just kind of like a, a meme queen type of thing. She has a lot of chaos and this person is, you know, just giving a little bit of appreciation post. I feel like Victoria, she joined the company at the wrong time and I feel like she joined an actual company. She can thrive. Face Connect would have been great for her or even EIEN. I just think she isn't given the love she deserves unless there's something I'm unaware about her. Really doesn't deserve the being struck second in Sanji. None of them do. None of them do. Her views is stinky low, yet she has been able to pull out and most likely most even know that she's getting into... But reminder, men's talents to pay to debut more over. Yeah, like basically, remember, uh, talents have sometimes like uh, Zion Lanza. She with, with uh, one girl story, I believe it was called. She says, when you debut, you have to pay to do all of your stuff, all your stuff. You have to pay for it. You have to pay to finish all your stuff to get everything done. And it is a lot. You're in the red a lot of times. You owe money. We have to take out loans to get your debut done because Nidhi Sandy doesn't help you with that. So, of course, that's one person's story, but I believe Zion. I believe the person that she is now. She's Sayu. Sayu Synchronicity now. I believe her. She is trustworthy. Her group hardly ever gets promoted. The only time I ever heard about the group is when they were debuting. Uh, it's probably part of the idiotic scattershot method of dumping out VTubers on bare bones budget, which is pretty true. Sadly, that's the way they do it. I heard of her indeed during debut during YouTube. Then I see some of her VODs and donate anything to her, but I would love to. But Nidhi Sandy would get their filthy hands on it. Uh, just hoping that at least one or two of them can manage to bring some money. Sorry, I forgot to finish reading everything. Unless something happens, she's stuck in a two-year contract or one year. It depends on what they sign. She and the rest of the North are fine, and some people merely got into the worst possible time. Exactly. I'm not going to read the rest of this person's story, but that's pretty much what it is. Uh, be honest, objectively terrible Nidhi Sanji is, there are still countless of Indian amateur creators that still take the offer. Yes, because if you're an indie, a lot of times what will happen, you go in there, you make a fan base, spend a year, let's say, it's a year or two making a fan base. You still get 20, 30, 40, 50K people, let's say, in the time that you're there, in the two years that you're there. You have 50K people that are interested in you. When you leave, if you make it well known who you are, you'll maybe get half of them coming to you. Even if you get a tenth of that, as an indie, going back to where you were, getting an influx of 5K subscribers is a lot. So just leaving it there. But yeah, Twisty, Denoth, TTT, a lot of the livers, un the only ones that I have issues with are the ones like in the black stream, the black screen stream, and other ones who have done actual things that are wrong. But every other liver that hasn't, they're doing their best. Even the ones that did something wrong, they're doing their best. They're just making mistakes. But still, the ones that make mistakes, I criticize. The ones that don't, I hope they do amazing jobs where they are. And I hope they stay happy because if they're happy in Niji, I'm not going to tell them to graduate. I just hope they're happy and stay happy and stay doing what they love. Hollow Lives fifth best got hit by the copyright ban hammer. Now, this is weird because this is, of course, automated system. And what is this for? Hollow Live has a different YouTube studio than most other creators. They have a corporate YouTube studio, a copyright holder YouTube studio where they can set certain parameters for copyright and for their own content. They can say, OK, you can use a cover, you can play it, but we'll take your 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 revenue or they can say no you can't play it at all anytime any of this matches either the video or matches the audio remove it immediately make it ineligible for monetary gain remove it immediately um you know that kind of stuff give it a copyright strike immediately all that stuff can automatically be put if you are a copyright holder and you put your content as a copyright copyright and content on youtube so somehow they weren't able to whitelist themselves because YouTube uh, only does the bare minimum when it comes to things from what I've seen, from just this personal opinion. From what I've seen, they do the bare minimum even for agencies like Hololive. So what happened? Hololive has Fifth Fest. They run the Fifth Fest. They are the company who does it. And their actual content got removed. It says Steam stream unavailable. Stream suspended for policy violation. One of the Fifth Fest video or music was the cause of the ban. And it says, uh, basically mentioning again, oh, 
And people, you know, this was on September 14th when it happened, and they go on to explain it a little bit more. It says, this is not a sign that YouTube's AI is malfunctioning, but rather that it is working properly. The problem is that there is no whitelist function to say, I will not ban this channel due to copyright issues. So even channel, even official channels will be automatically banned without question. You can appeal it. You can be like, hey, this is my channel. This is my stuff. Look, this is the actual channel that it's on. And this is this is the channel that you ended up making, you know, this happen to what's going on. And it's it's a whole process. They are the copyright holder. So it's going to be probably easier. They are a corporation as well. And YouTube is very kind to corporations and YouTube is very expeditious with corporations. It means they work fast with corporations. So I have no doubt that this is going to be coming back. It's just funny and weird that uh, this would happen to an actual corporate account. And of course, people here are saying things like, uh, that's probably true. That's a computer system. It would be normal processing. Copyright laws are pretty strict these days. And with my thing, a whitelist involves legal issues. So it seems like it would be difficult. That is a side that I didn't, didn't think about. I just thought about the creator side. Uh, having a DMCA uh, whitelist might be problematic because for their safe harbor provisions, they have to be equal in every single way. That means they cannot prioritize certain people in copyright uh, disputes versus other people. They have to, if the copyright holder or whoever owns the rights to it says, remove this, they have to remove it without question. They can't be like, wait, is this person who said remove it the same one that's actually uploading it? They don't care. They have to remove it immediately. And that is one of those bad things about since the DMCA is so freaking old, it was done in the 80, 90s. It was done in the 90s, I believe. So DMCA is old. It's old, outdated. It hasn't been updated very well. And if it has been updated, it's been doing a very bad job of it. So it really hasn't been updated properly. And that's why Hololive fell into this. If you don't know, Rima recently made something about uh, the massive scandal in the VTuber community two years ago with Bunny Ayu and Admiral Baru, uh, they went over everything. And the thing is, it had recently popped up again because uh, Bunny Ayu is trying to come back in VTuber form. Again, she used to be a VTuber. Then she became a flesh tuber, you know, a booba tuber, whatever you want to call them. Then she wanted to become a YouTuber, a VTuber again. And who's the person in the middle? That's Lena Lazar. Lena Lazar was deeply affected by both of them, by Admiral Baru and also by Bunny Ayu. Deeply affected, it was harassment, it was mistreatment, it was a lot of things. And of course, this person, Admiral Baru, couldn't get past being a part of the news again and said, it must be a slow content day if you need to drag up three-year-old drama. No, uh, Rima, along with an uh, internet historian, uh, you know, people like uh, Depressed No Sagi, others out there do these biopics on the whole situation because it's something that affected a lot of people and actually is still very, very much uh, something that should be said because Bunny Ayu is trying to forget about it, trying to push it back in the past like everyone forgets about it and make it something happen. So here we go. It says, maybe for you it is just drama, but it impacted a lot of people. As far as my channel goes, it's mostly retrospective and past controversies. And that's what it is. It, Rima does do that. It says, for those of us that hadn't fallen down the rabbit hole until recently, this is important context towards the personalities we see on Twitch and YouTube. Didn't realize that Lena had a figure company, uh, was married, or that she fought through cancer. Yeah, Lena is, 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 a, is a freaking, holy crap. She's a fighter. She even got through this crap and did really well by getting th through this crap. And Parrot says again, by this logic, people should stop making historic documentaries because they are dragging up a hundred year old drama. So it must be slow content day. Bro can't wrap his head around wanting to explore the past instead of just the news. Exactly. There are people like myself who do the news. And then there are people like um, like Rima who also does news because she also does you know some new stuff, uh, some recent stuff. But she is more of a person, like I said, who does biopics, who does retrospectives, just like Depressed No Psyche does. And other people out there do that too. She's one of the ones, one of the big ones that does it in the VTuber sphere. And I don't understand why people can't get that. Uh, considering Bunny Ayu wants to come back into VTuber, like I said, this is something that matters. You are quick to dismiss people that don't make you look good, huh? So uh, this is another thing here of him like dismissing people. It's probably actually visual. Let's just, let's just hear. Let's hear what he has to say, because this is someone uh, that is probably they've put there for a reason of, you know, um, either, you know, audio or something like that. Let's see if there's any audio involved. This has all gotten out of hand. Lena has per has portrayed and played a professional victim. This has all gotten... Oh, right. She's the professional victim, right? She has gotten past all this. She hasn't brought any of this up until Bunny Ayu has talked about it again, like in the sense of wanting to become a VTuber. This was not in anybody's zeitgeist. This was not in the zeitgeist. This was not involved because people had actually moved on as she had. Of course, it's going to be a part of her history that she's never going to forget, but she has become stronger and bigger than that moment made her. 
If you didn't repair anything in three years, we got to discuss it again. Not a good look, and you will age like milk if you ask the same thing in the future. Yeah, it shows that Admiral Barus has known nothing. He is a manipulator, it looks like. He's trying to manipulate the narrative. He's trying to gaslight people into making it seem like nothing actually happened when there's proof that things happened. It's just, it's not good. It's not a good look. Never should be, but be said this way. But of course, people who like to manipulate and gaslight always do this. I am pleased to announce, and I'm sure Hololive is as well, that Hosha Marine is going to have their first live on December 7th and 8th. It's called Ahoy, You're All Pirates. Official hashtag is that one. And of course, we have here, which is the full-on announcement of the Hosha Marine Ahoy, You're All Pirates. On the 7th and the 8th in Yokohama Prefecture, it's going to be the night before we sail on the, on the first day, day one. And in the second day, it's going to be embark on a voyage. It's all going to be, of course, Marine doing her solo live. And if it is like they've done it before uh, with, you know, projecting versus live 2D image and being 3D, then uh, they're probably going to have to have it more centered based on what I know from going to Miku Expos. It says news on the 15th bonus image for the alternate jacket of the first album. Ahoy, you're all pirates has been revealed. Uh, Hosha Marine's first live Ahoy, you're all pirates special website has been renewed. Uh, you have here her an, an announcement of the album itself. Japan's most subscribed VTuber, YouTube, uh, YouTube Hosho Marine, presents a full album and that encapsulates the individuality. It's her first album, and not only does it include all of her singles to date, but also be Shoujo Reefs and Pirates. It's the announcement there. Merch, you have the full merch here, which is, of course, the pen light, the shirts, the, um, you know, special tickets, ticket holders, that type of stuff that always happens. The videos that pop up are all the things that she's recently done. Treasure box. Uh, it, it, she also has one Dead Man's box, the Unison, other things. The Hoy, the How About Pi Pi Mask. This is a full announcement of everything. This is also explaining what Hosho Marine does. It says, so basically, she's just a girl cosplaying as a pirate. Now she acts like an older sister, seducing and teasing in a devilish way. She's a sexy female boss with a devilish erotic charm. And she's young, about 17 years old. She's 17 season three, or whatever she calls it at this point. Here we have her being told by Fubuki that, you know, congratulations to that. Finally, a solo live. Congratulations, Marin-chan. So excited after the decision was made. Had to burn this into my memory. And she, as I was shown before, the response is, thank you. Baba Korn actually has two official song, original songs as a unit. I'll be waiting naked for Fubu Fubu. Of course, that's freaking, that's freaking uh, <laughs> Marine uh, uh, to a T. It says here, at long last, the awaited solo live performance has arrived. A it has a huge capacity and would be held over two days. So it's actually at a larger stadium. So surely everyone should apply. Hopefully it fills up. And I think it will. Marine is very popular in Japan. She is the most uh, subscribed to Japanese VTuber, I think, right now. At least Japanese female VTuber. Not sure about full one. But yes, uh, she's having it there. And of course, people are, are being happy, you know, showing Marine merch. Then you have here, Hosha Marine's first lie of a whole, you all pirates. Uh, Saturday, December 7th uh, at... Sunday, December 8th at K Arena, Yokohama, two-day event, you know, put in here. And of course, I can't show that full one because, of course, uh, Hololife does have certain content things that are automatically put through. Usually, they're pretty good, but I don't want to take any risks. It's 12-7 and 12-8. Of course, some of the visuals here, you have it two days. Day one is going to be, you know, you start your sale and it's going to be the, the regular Hosho Marine, look, day two is going to be continuing on your journey with Sister Marine this time. So it's a whole you all pirates, K Arena, Yokohama. They're doing a really good job actually announcing all of this. And the VIP tickets are 300 bucks, 300, how about 250, 200 to 250 actually, 330,000. Uh, yen, 15,000 yen is about a hundred bucks at this point at what the yen is so far around there. So these are not exorbitant prices for VIP seating. I have paid upwards of five, 600 bucks for VIP seating in the past for festivals, for big concerts and such. So it is not out of this world to see these kinds of prices, especially for a big talent like Hosho Marine and for a big organization like Hololive. And here we have, of course, the merch for Hollow Pro Shop. It says, you know, the pre-orders, the, the merch drops and pre-orders are here. The Marine Light, the T-shirt, the face towel. Then you also have um, 4800 for the Marine Light, T-shirt for 4000 Case, ticket case, 2400 Face towel, 2500 and, uh, Like, if some, people will buy the face towel, they're probably going to buy two. Because one, they may actually use. And one, they're going to keep as, you know, a memento of the situation, most likely. And, um... They're not going to do it to try to smell marine sweat. No, no, no. They're not going to do that. Hosha Marine, first live Ahoy, you're all pirates concert merch. It's being sold on the Hollow Pro shop as a minute, maximum 15 pieces per purchase. So they're trying to prevent scalpers here. Of course, here, they're trying to prevent scalpers because a lot of people will scalp this stuff and then sell it much higher and, you know, 
whatever shop they end up putting it on, which is never good for this. And I'm glad that they're putting limits on all this stuff. Estimated around mid-November is when they're going to be shipping. So just be aware of that. Hosho Marine is combining with Yokohama Marine Tower collaboration. It's basically going to be the event period is Monday, December 2nd to December 29th. So basically the whole month. Yokohama in December is colored with Marine. More details to be announced at a later date. Look forward to it. And of course, you have here to commemorate Hosho Marines from the official Hollow Live uh, account. Release because she has an album release. So the album release and live performance collaboration decided at Yokohama Marine Tower. Details will be released at a later date. Please look forward to it. Of course, look forward to everything that's on there. And of course, um, continuation on the album thing. Hosho Marines first nationwide release album. Ahoy, you're all pirates. A regular edition uh, alternative jacket design revealed. It may even be a handwritten signature. So you may even have a handwritten signature added to it. And let's take a look at the website. The official shop, you can pre-order it. And Amazon Music, you can pre-order it as well. Here's the CD itself. 23 bucks is not, not expensive. You can have that as a physical CD for yourself instead of buying it digitally. Of course, digital, you'll have it quicker. Digital, you'll have it, it at your door right away, pretty much. Uh, with the physical, it will take a bit. Like it says, it's estimated around mid-October. Um, you'll definitely have it a lot quicker uh, for if you get it digital. But I always like having the physical copies as well. And then digitize it myself. A bit of a happiness break. Usually I do memes during this time, but a bit of a happiness break with Mint. She says, congratulations for the Mint concert. Says, Mint concert, I have so much respect for the five of them being VTuber pioneers in the West. I wouldn't even be here without them. And my afterlife really changed so much for the better after starting VTubing. Congratulations on four years. And yes, the Mint 4th anniversary concert, I've already covered it. It's this one here. This was their long, long a weighted concert a lot of people were very happy and of course you had different moments where they were you know doing their little things singing and um you know ame was singing in the rain <laughs> you had um of course gura singing as well in the rain and uh you had them together so it was a lot of times this is a little bit of a happy time for everybody and yes they were pioneers just wanted to give you this short little break of happiness showing that there are good parts in the vtuber community too this is a short one i covered it before but I want to cover it again because I want to remind everybody. She was a doxer. She is a doxer. Dove the doxer, Dove a love VT, uh, has returned. And let me tell you, she's an absolute hypocrite because of how she's been blocking this guy right here. Uh, this is Dark Souls VTuber. This person docks someone and thinks they can come back. F out of here. Uh, share this. I don't support him. Uh, wild. Yeah, don't support Dove a love. Don't support Dove a love. People like this need to be reminded you don't dox and then just people forget and come back. Yes, you can get a second chance, but only when you've actually felt bad. This person here, just from everything I've seen from the behaviors that they've been showing recently, it's not a, oh, I feel bad. You know, I feel really bad about it. She took it more as like, oh, I didn't know. Even in her comeback thing that I, that I did earlier before that, that I went over, she was more, it was more like, oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry that I didn't know. I'm sorry that you guys got angry at it. And I hope that you guys will forgive me type of thing. And she doxed Kenji VTuber. And she was involved with the Mafunga Boys. And she's the reason why the Mafunga Boys are gone and no longer a thing. Um, Dove character used to be a mod for Kenji. She After she got unmodded, she started doxing him with the Mafunga Boys, giving information out. Um, she's doesn't like people who are criticizing her. She doesn't like people who... I'm probably going to get blocked eventually because I criticize her too openly. So that is just someone to stay away from. Just reminding you, stay away from Double Love VT. Casper addresses how he left his PL. Who is Casper? He was someone from um, Magni from Hollow Life, Hollow Stars. I can say that now because, of course, he's no longer there. Remember, though, if you go to his channel, please always call him Casper because that's what he wants to be called. That's yeah, that's his personality you. now. That's everything that you know that he wants to be. I'm just gonna go over some of the things he said. Not everything overall. Thank snippets you and pieces. Here. I'm gonna be missing some of it, of course, because they're snippets and pieces. So apologize if I missed an important part that you were thinking of watching. Me and I'm slowly finding the comp. His volume is very low. This isn't me, so I'm gonna have to actually raise the volume. Uh, let me just raise the volume as much as I can here. Confidence in myself again to to be here and to say, hey, you know what? Like nobody is going to tell me that I don't belong here, that I'm not more real than other people, that I don't belong because I'm going to do it better than you've ever seen. The best, as best as I can. So thank you. I mean, you guys that are already here that I've been seeing you here the past month, I feel a lot of this is maybe kind of goes without saying or needless to say. You know, there's a lot that I did not get to say, 
right? There's a lot that I want to say, wish I could have said, but will not and cannot say. And, and I know that that's very frustrating to hear. There were a lot of people that I had to leave. Well, one, I can only speak on my behalf. Don't want to speak in a way or speak on things that I feel like the other party should need or want to like defend themselves, right? And that's good. Remember, he's still under, just because he wants to be kind. He's under a kind of NDA, even if it's unofficial, it's been a long time since he's been gone, that NDA may not actually be in action anymore, but just to keep the kindness because, you know, he didn't leave on the horrible terms, just to keep the goodwill between him and his former employer, he doesn't want to say these things. I don't want to speak in a way where I feel like someone else might want to chime in. On I'm sorry it had to happen the way that it did, as it has already been stated very clearly that it was a mutual decision. And again, I never want to say anything that I feel might have the other party want to say something or defend themselves about. Like I said, I'm going to speak for myself, So especially like during that time period. But at this point, 2024, at this point, after the time that's passed, I'm right here. I'm streaming. I'm literally live streaming right now. And so while I can do my best to understand, there are things that I could not do. There's the things that sucked for everyone involved. I'm sorry. And I wish I could have said bye. I'm sorry. I am sorry. At this point, I'm literally live streaming as we speak right now on youtube.com. I stream every day at 4 p.m. Pacific. I sad because I see, I can't help but see sometimes, especially with the way the For You page comes around, like I see some people and I get sad because for them, I see that they're, they're not okay. And I think it's good to have memories. I think that it's good to remember the quote unquote good times and legacy and history and all that. But you know, I get sad because I want them to, I, I want them to move on. And I know it's easier said than done. And obviously I have a part in that, whether that's watching me here or not. And I wish I could say this to them. Maybe I am in a way right here, but just i'm here now but if you don't want to be here at, at, at least let yourself move on please because it's sad it makes me sad style things that were part of me and things that i did you know i want to be as careful as i can here but i was given an impossible task and i did it somehow something that i don't think anyone else could have done and it was hard early on before anyone knew anything right i remember going to my discord and i see you know people i knew you know shitting on me they didn't know though right i could have said no but i did my part okay i did it but no one no one owes me anything. When new people were introduced into the mix, things were things were not going so well and tensions were high. Maybe I already knew that things weren't going so well, but I sucked it up. I did my best to bring them in. And I think I did a really good job, especially without what bad things were going on at the time. I'm not saying anyone owes me anything because of that, but I just want, if you want to find me, I'm here. And I know I, I've made a lot of references and, and will continue to do so. Cause like I said, a lot of these things are. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. But yeah, he's mentioning a lot of things. If you want to watch the whole thing, it's out there. It's Casper addresses some things from uh, our bull cat clipper. It's a, a clipper of Casper. As you can see there, you're going to be able to take a look at it. But yeah, he says, you know, not everyone there's, there aren't people to blame specifically. Things just happened. He would, he did the best with what he could, as you heard him say, and he went through and was given an impossible task, of course, you know, getting Hollow Stars up and getting all that type of stuff up because he was one of the first generations out there of, of Hollow Stars EN. It is an impossible task to try to get the male VTuber stuff up when a lot of times the v the female VTuber stuff is a bit easier to get up. It's harder for the males to get up a lot of times unless you start doing like what Luxium did of, you know, trying to push up <clears throat> the parasocialism. But the way that he did it and that Hollow Stars wanted to do it, it's different and it was hard. It wasn't easy, but they did what they could. And once he saw that nothing more could be done, that's when he left. And I respect him. You should respect uh, also what he's done in the past and respect him right now as Casper. If you go and watch him, watch him as Casper. Don't watch him as Magni. Don't watch him as a Hollow Star. Watch him as Casper and see him for what he's doing now moving forward. Welcome back everybody to another VTuber showcase where I like to give love to the VTuber community, small, big, whatever. You're never too small to be a part of this showcase. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, like I said, I want to build a community and have the community build each other up instead of trying to tear each other down with competition and you know docs and other kind of stuff like that so here we have dino vtuber misty which simply mystical on twitter it's an aspiring full-time variety streamer join me for cozy gaming and chats follow to become friends and then they have the email connection there and of course they have their little intro that we're gonna play <laughs> hi cuties welcome to my cozy corner of the internet i'm misty your friendly neighborhood streamer here on twitch i stream on monday to friday with bonus streams on saturday and sunday 
So if you guys are interested in checking it out, here's what I do. See you soon. Bye. Help, 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 help. So a nice little intro to what they do. Now on their about section, they have howdy homies. <clears throat> it's Misty. I'm a VTube streamer who loves diving into cozy games, MOBAs, RPGs, JRPGs, survival games, and more. Please follow chat rules and be kind to me and other cuties. My stream is a place to chat, relax, and create friendships. Can't wait to meet you. So of course, you know, they have all their, their links here, which I'm going to go to their VOD channel as well. Their little, uh, this a clip channel slash VOD channel slash shorts channel here, uh, where they put, post their clips. They create certain playlists, um, the VODs, Simply Misty VODs, they're all there. So they've they've posted not only their little clips here, they posted their VODs, which is a, a smart thing to do because, of course, as I mentioned before in previous uh, episodes of BTuber Showcase, uh, Twitch only saves your VODs for a certain period of time. Even if you are a affiliate, I think it saves it for seven days. If your partner is 14 days, if you have Twitch Turbo or whatever like that, and you're a creator, then you can go for, I think, up to 30 days. So it depends. But if you're just starting out, it'll just do it for a couple of days. So that's where you have to be careful. And that's why Twitch VODs are usually put on a VTuber's YouTube in order to save them for posterity. Because YouTube will just save it. YouTube will just have it there. Thank you again, Simply Misty, for being a part of the, v the VTuber Showcase, allowing me to showcase your channel. And I do honestly hope that this helps you grow. Because that's what I do these things for. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.